We are now live. We are going to give this just a few seconds for people to trickle in. But in the meantime, if you just joined me, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. The goal of this live broadcast is to put a face to the gadget because I get on uh, a lot of these Kickstarter type projects and it's just kind of this faceless person. I don't even know if I should believe them. Is this some company over in China or Russia that is trying to sell an existing product? Is this really an original design? And I am here to actually give you a little bit of uh, authenticity, so to speak, as to the, the production behind Tactic Clip, as well as um, some little sneak peek, hints, tips, tricks as to how I personally use Tactic Clip. In case you can't tell, I do actually have it in my hair. I know, shameless plug. Honestly, it, you wouldn't wear it like this out in public or else you'd get laughed at. However, I did wear it actually all day yesterday, uh, clipped to my shirt like this. And I actually forgot about it until I actually needed it. <laughs> and my wife was trying to open up something. I think it was a box from Amazon. And uh, she's trying to cut through the tape. And she said, hey, do you have a knife? And I'm like, no, I don't have a pocket knife. But I have the tactic clip. I'm an excitable sort of fellow, in case you don't know. I'm bow, as in bow tie. Normally, I wear a bow tie, but I was out shooting today, and bow ties get in the way when you're shooting. I know, first world hipster problem. But speaking of hipsters, I live here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, nice little gloomy outdoors today. No, it's not. Notice that everybody always talks about the weather, weather and traffic. So today in this live broadcast, we are not going to talk about, we just talked about weather, but we're not going to talk about traffic because you don't care about those things. You guys are here to get um, some ideas as to how you could possibly use Tactic Clip. I'm not here to sell you on this thing. If it works for you, awesome. If it doesn't work for you, that's okay too. But hopefully I can share a little bit of my heart and my dream behind this crazy little hair clip. Uh, the journey actually started a good year ago and uh, I stumbled across some black clips like this. By the way, I have a whole bunch of little goody prototypes here that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys. And of course I have short hair. You're, you're not gonna do this. It's probably for the ladies out there. Or if you're a dude, you could put it on your shirt or on your sleeve or on your keychain <clears throat> or on your keychain or something like that. But you'll notice that that is a pointless piece of metal. And the more I thought about this, I was like, Wow, it's it, the only purpose that this serves is to pull the hair back uh, for my wife. And I also have two little daughters, Lucy and Penny, and they can pull their hair back like this. And, and great, it serves its purpose. And then I was like, I started Googling around and I found these multi-tool hair clips. So yes, they, the, the idea sort of exists out there. So I was so excited. So I got on Amazon and I purchased this guy right here, the MTA hair clip. It was overly priced, so bloody expensive. And when I show, when it showed up, I was so disappointed because for one thing, uh, and I'm, and I'm going to get to this, I really hate to slam on other people's creativity and innovativeness, but you know, I am a person who, who sees a problem out there and I will grab it with my grubby little hands and try to solve this problem and make it better for the world. And what I found with this, uh, this multi-tool hair clip was, well, first of all, it's really thick metal. And I gave it to my wife and she snapped it like this. You can actually hear the loud snap. In case you don't know, that's really thick metal. You probably can't see that very well, but it hurts the fingers, especially when you do it with one hand like this. Okay, maybe it doesn't hurt my fingers because I'm, I'm a tough little bearded individual. But let's be honest. My wife was like, I'm not going to use this. Plus, the teeth were really dull. Uh, you couldn't really cut through anything. Plus, it had this dinky little bottle opener on it. And I don't know about you guys, but I, yes, it's a cute concept to open up bottles. And yes, you theoretically can open up a bottle with this. But I wanted to create something that's not for frat boys out there. If you're a college student individual, as I was, and you need something to open up your beer bottles, you're probably going to have something existing on your keychain already. 
or a little tip right here, you can use, uh, you know, the seatbelt that goes across you, the, uh, the actual seatbelt thing, you can use that to open up your beer. So not that you should be opening up your beer in a vehicle. But I digress. Hopefully there's no law enforcement personnel listening to this right here. So point being, this concept, not only was it overpriced, but it just didn't work for my uses. I wanted something to actually open up a box. I wanted something that was robust enough to flash against this flint to actually create a spark. So I actually was looking at, uh, are you guys familiar with Gerber, Gerber knives? I actually have a whole bunch of those knives around. In case you can't tell, can, can you see over there? Can you see over there? I, this entire wall is, is full of weapons over here. I travel all over the world from Africa to Nepal. I, I, may, I actually do mission work. <laughs> yes, I do love Jesus. And I promise you, I'm not a violent person. Uh, but yeah, I do mission work all around the world. And I've accumulated weapons from all over the place. In case you're wondering why, I think weapons are rather interesting. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm a dude, okay? So anyway, I have a bunch of weapons and there's this, this, this knife company actually located about three hours south from where I live called Gerber Knives. They're located out of Portland. Great, great knives in case you've never had a chance. I usually have one in my pocket right now, but I don't have a pocket knife in my pocket because I have the tactic clip. Oh, shameless plug. So these Gerber knives, they have something called the shard, which is a, a hugely highly rated keychain. And the shard has this, this raptor style uh, tip, sort of like this, not exactly, no, no patent infringe, infringement going on here. But I noticed that all these reviews, people are like, this is the greatest keychain ever. I just love this idea of this point that comes down like that. And I actually bought it and I played with it. I thought, this is brilliant. Why don't I take this keychain concept and infuse it into a hair clip? And so that started this idea, check this out. This is actually a 3D printed version of the, the tactic clip. My buddy who uh, has a 3D printer, he's a high school science teacher. I was telling him about this crazy dream. Uh, and uh, yes, it was, there was the influence of an IPA. It was cold and refreshing, but not too much alcohol, I promise. Um, all things in moderation. So we were talking about this and he was like, well, send me a conceptual. I'll try to print it out and see if you can play with it. Now, as you can see, it's pretty thick like that. So, you know, you can only do so much with this. It doesn't snap on and off, but I got to really experiment with the trajectory of the point coming down like that to see how it felt ergonomically. And I was like, oh, this, this feels really, really good. So what I did was I, uh, I actually contacted a company in China and I said, hey, how much, you know, can you, does it cost to reduce these things like this? Because I wanted to do as much legwork as possible before actually announcing something like this out there on Kickstarter to all my friends and family. Because I hate it when people start Kickstarters and they don't do enough research into it. There's no product development. There's just, it's just kind of this crazy dream. And so you back these projects and, you know, and then all of a sudden these eccentric creative people are like, oh, I actually have to put teeth to this. You mean I actually have to create a product? And they have, you know, a hundred backers behind them going, yeah, we're trusting that you'll actually follow through with this. So I wanted to mitigate as much uh, risk as possible and try to line up all my ducks. So today launching the tactic clip here on Kickstarter, this uh, unique design. Uh, we went through many, many iterations. I say we because it's me and a few other buddies. I'm kind of the face of it because I'm sort of a talkative fellow. Uh, there's some shy people out there and that's okay. Uh, but just a brief explanation about how this is actually designed. You see that there is the raptor claw uh, tip that goes down like that. Uh, the little eye right there, some people are a little weirded out by that. That actually serves two different functions. Uh, the first one is to, uh, it's actually a wire stripper and uh, I was stripping yesterday. <laughs> that sounds really bad. I was stripping wire yesterday 
I don't want to go against uh, Kickstarter's uh, terms of use right here. They're going to take down this live stream for a man claiming that he was stripping on live. Anyway, I digress. So yes, you can uh, do uh, use this as a wire stripper. I wouldn't use this day to day. Like if you're an electrician, obviously you're going to have some sort of pliers if you do this a lot. But in a pinch, let's say that you are you know up in the attic or something like that. You're trying to uh, you know, it gets some wires together for your speakers or something, which is what I use this for, for speaker wire. It worked wonderfully. And I was so giddy with excitement. I was like, it actually worked. It actually works. Uh, not that I had any doubt, but uh, anyway. And then the secondary purpose to this is actually a keychain hole. And so it fits right in there. So if you don't have long hair and if you don't want to put it in your hair, uh, or if you're going through the airport security or something like that, you want to try to take as much metal off you as possible, which is highly recommended. Just stick it on your keychain, put it with your big bundle of keys and send it on through. Now, technically this is not a knife. So a lot of people out there may be like, oh wow, this is just going to replace my everyday carry knife. No, it will not. It will not. Uh, nothing is a good substitute for just a good solid blade, which is why a lot of everyday carry people actually carry two different knives with them. Uh, this is a supplement. This is for uh, a lot of women or dudes out there who maybe are really, really minimalist. Uh, you can fit something like this on your sleeve, um, but you know, maybe you are out cycling or something and you do, and you're trying to go ultra light. Of course, you're not going to carry a giant K bar knife with you when you're out cycling. Uh, however, um, you know, or when you're out shooting or something like, ah, oh, God, where'd I put my knife? I've got some gunpowder underneath my thumbnail. Oh, you can use this to clear that out. But anyway, back to the features right here. If we were to travel up on the spine, you'll see that there is a little measuring tool. Initially, we thought there was... Uh, we could put a file on there, um, but we found that the little serrated edge on this side actually suffices quite nicely to cut through things. So let's say, for example, zip ties. You don't want to put a, a file on a zip tie. Plus, the file actually made it a lot thinner, and that compromised the integrity of this. And when we snap and unsnap this a few hundred times, we don't want this to break. And when you file metal down, it's going to, of course, compromise the integrity of that metal. Now, a lot of these other multi-tools out there, we notice that there is a filing piece right there, which, you know, if you want to drop a ton of money and buy something like this, if you really want that file, you can if you'd like. But for me personally, it compromises the integrity and I don't want to do anything to shave down that metal. So instead of a file, we put a little measuring piece right here, which is about an inch and a quarter. And uh, it, it, that's not going to be a make or break thing, but it was just open real estate. So we thought, what can we put there? Like, oh, we're going to put, you know, a, a, a ruler right there. Cool. So if we were to continue back around here, we're actually going to open this guy up like this. And it actually works as a fidget tool nicely. I noticed I was in the car yesterday stuck in Seattle traffic and I was just doing this and I looked down and thought, hey, we could market this as a fidget tool, but that's a side thing. We don't want to force anything on people here. So this right there is actually a um, a, mini a miniature uh, yeah, speak bow, a mini screwdriver. And so if I were to take off my glasses, uh, it actually fits perfectly in there. It's a little rounded tip. And, and if you're like, oh, Bo, screwdrivers are supposed to be flat. The rounded tip is actually um, uh, we did it on purpose basically because I don't have any zip ties with me right now, but look on our Kickstarter page right there or on tacticlip.org and you'll see there is uh, a few photos and actually a video. You might actually see it in the video there of me using this to open up some zip ties uh, because since it's rounded, it slips right in. It doesn't get caught. And uh, so you pop it in there and then you just kind of wiggle, 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 wiggle and it, uh, it unlocks zip ties. Now, if a police officer detains you and you're in zip ties, don't try to get away. Uh, but if you do a lot of traveling like me and you run across a lot of hairy situations, I've been accused of being a spy in West Africa. Uh, in Nepal, I was accused of being a terrorist. Uh, I, I get into a lot of trouble with Knox Studio. I, I run a nonprofit film studio. We produce film for other nonprofits out there in the world. So I go into all sorts of atypical situations. And in that case, I'm not saying that you should try to escape from zip ties, but in a pinch, if you need something, and this is in your hair or on your sleeve or in your pocket, uh, and they frisked you and they didn't find it, you can pull this out and theoretically, 
I get out of your zip ties, all according to your own innovativeness. All right, so if we were to continue back around here, you can see on the very bottom, there is a bit of a serrated shark tooth style edge. And uh, you will notice that it's much, much longer than, it's about twice the length of these conventional multi-tool tactile, uh, multi-tool hair clips, uh, which if you were to watch the beginning of this video, you'll understand why I don't like this. But instead, there's a lot more real estate here. So when you are cutting through a zip tie, it actually only takes like four or five saws back and forth, and then it slices right through. Now, I did say before that this is not a knife, and it is not a knife. Technically on Amazon, it's against their terms of service, terms of use, to sell any kind of blade that can be concealed. And so we act, I actually contacted them and I said, hey, is this a concealed blade? And they said, if you put it under multi-tool, uh, it, it is not, and if it's, if it's a sharpened edge, then it's considered a knife. And I said, well, it's not a sharpened edge. Now, granted, if you saw back and forth, you're gonna get through there eventually. Uh, but they they looked at the design and amazon.com right here in the Seattle area said this is technically not a knife. So technically speaking, you could bring this into a weapons-free zone because it's not a weapon. You can technically bring it through TSA because it's not a weapon. It's just a hair clip, right? Right. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, now, ultimately, I do defer to authority. And if you do get this confiscated, heh, that's on you. Now, with that being said, that's why I want to actually provide four in a pack uh, to all the people who are up for backing this crazy, crazy project. Um, initially, uh, we're just going to be giving one out to everybody. But we thought, hey, let's just kind of have a fun incentive to incentivize the first 199 people. If in fact, all of those slots fill up, 199 people, then we will thank all of those first movers by sending them three additional clips. So that's four total. So basically, if you want to back us for 10 bucks, plus like $5 shipping, uh, so it's $15, just, just budget for $15. Uh, then you will get four of these if, in fact, we fill up all of those um, those tiers, those, those rewards in that tier. And then eventually we're going to be um, you know, releasing more rewards out there. I've been talking with the factory about even potentially creating uh, a different color. So maybe there's like tactical green. I don't know. People overuse the word tactical. Basically, army green. You know that color green is kind of an olive drab green. I think that'd be so cool. Uh, or according to military uniform specs, this uh, hair clips actually have to match the hair. And so this might blend in with me. Uh, but if you're a blonde or even a redhead, I think that'd be really, really cool to get some different colors going so it actually blends into the hair. Because uh, they say you can wear these things as long as it blends into the hair. I would say that black is going to blend into 80 to 90% of military personnel if, in fact, you choose to wear this with your uniform. Uh, I'm sure a lot of civilians are just going to be wearing this just because it's a lot of fun. Um, lastly, uh, I just wanted to say that Really, the sky's the limit when it comes to creativity with these things. Every single day that I use this thing, I keep being surprised with more uh, use that you can get out of the tactic clip. Um, and, and, and I'm technically the creator of this thing. And I keep being surprised, like, oh, I'm just giddy with delight. So, for example, uh, you can pop it like this and you can get a jar of oil. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, bear with me. You can get a jar of, let's say, olive oil and put this in the olive oil like this. Get a little piece of string or shoelace and thread it through that little hole. And so you have effectively created a lantern. And I've tried it and it actually works. You just kind of light it because it, it keeps the string off of the oil and then the rest of the, the string is kind of curled up in the oil down below and it's wicking up the oil uh, into uh, the little nubbin up top that's peeking out through that hole. So you can effectively turn this into a lantern, a lamp, if in fact you have olive oil and a string laying around. So you can just do fun things like that. My dad actually said, Bo, you can magnetize this, drop it into water, and so it's floating on the surface tension, and it would turn into a compass because it's magnetized. 
Like, whoa, so we did actually do it. It took some doing to float on top of the water. So that's why our selling points aren't compass or, or you know, lantern. We're not gonna try to oversell this thing. Really, it's just a pointy tipped, um, you know, military beret, not beret, barrette. Beret is the little French thing, it's a barrette. Uh, so we don't want to try to you know sell people on this too much, but if you think this will work for you, I hope that you will join us in backing this Kickstarter, and I hope that you can have as much fun with this as we are having. So that's it. My name is Bo Chevisu. I encourage you to go have some fun with the tactic clip. If you guys have any suggestions, questions, comments, insults, free pizza coupons, uh, we are here to uh, answer your questions to the best of our squishy little abilities. And uh, thanks so much for joining us, guys. This is going to be on air for the next 48 hours if I read the Kickstarter stuff correctly. And uh, go and share the living daylights out of this thing. Out of this thing. I am so stoked. All right. God bless you guys.